in our ship. So first of all, I've got a turntable. I've got a piece of non-slip underneath, which you can cut. And then I've got a clear, this is actually a ganache plate. Uh, and these ganache plates are quite old now. They've been used a lot. This is a six and a quarter inch. And it says this side facing out or up. So you need to remember to do that. So this one's going to go face down because it's facing out. And the first thing I'm going to do is put a few spots of buttercream onto my ganache and plate. I've also leveled all of my uh, single layers separately and I've done them for one and a quarter inches. And what I'm going to do is to put that into the center and give it a slight wiggle. And now I'm going to equally spread my buttercream. Now you can pipe it. I'm just going to pop it on with a knife today. Uh, this is just a birthday cake that's going out, but I thought it might be helpful for you to see my processes. Now, in order to not have crumbs through your chocolate buttercream, as you can see, I haven't picked up any cake crumbs. But the method I just did is the way I'm doing it. So I'm starting from it the centre and I'm pushing outwards. I'll also get a second piece of non-slip when I'm ready to ganache and then I'm going to put on another layer so you put on another layer very gently and you just twist it down to bed it in now you know you've bedded it in because you'll see the, uh, the buttercream start to come out you can of course use ganache for this you can use any filling you want this person's having chocolate buttercream you can also pipe a circle of chocolate buttercream around the outside, put your jam in the centre. But I tend to do that when I'm reversing a cake so that the jam doesn't just seep through the sponges. So it's just what works for you, really. Now, this is a six inch round cake. I've actually got five layers and it's going to be quite tall. So each layer is one and a quarter inches tall. Let's get some of the excess off. So I don't need to make this buttercream layer really thick because we've already been very generous with our cake. So obviously you would continue in this method, add in the rest of your tiers. Now what I actually need to do is to get my side scraper. This is my side scraper. So it's quite a tall one. It is actually 25 centimetres long. And it needs to be significantly taller than your cake for you to be able to do it properly. So the first thing I need to do is to make sure all my tiers are in line. So I'm just going around with my scraper and just measuring. The next thing I actually need to do is to make sure that my cake is sitting upright. So not only is it going to be horizontal, so you need to wiggle it that way. But it is also going to be vertical as well. So I am checking my spirit level from both sides. And that's really important. So this now could be cling filmed and popped back into the fridge to settle for a bit before we start a ganache. So there's my cake now. It's all been cling filmed. It's got the ganache in plate on the top and on the bottom. Only fixed in place with three little blobs of buttercream. This is going to go back into either the fridge for half an hour or the freezer for 10 minutes. Just to firm up that buttercream and make it a lot easier to put the ganache on. I've just taken the cake out of the fridge and I've also got my ganache out as well. Now this ganache uh, was made this morning. You can pop it into the fridge for a few hours. But what you want, you want movement in the ganache. You want that peanut butter consistency. But if it's too cold, it's actually going to tear your cake apart when you're actually trying to use it. So you can see there, there's a nice amount of movement to this ganache. So this is one part uh, cream to three parts chocolate. Okay, so there we go. So it's nice peanut butter consistency. So I'll pop it off to the one side. Now we're going to get crumbs on this first coat. So this is why you do two coats. So I'm just going to lift very gently all the way around the side. You can also pipe it on as well. Now I know that this client is going to use all of this ganache. However, if you wanted to make sure, let's just get that bit out of there, that you're not going to get any contaminants in the ganache, you can use a plate. And every time you've used your knife, you scrape your knife on that plate. I'm going to scrape my knife so you can see it gives you the, the bits and pieces that you've scraped off. It just means you should be less likely to have chocolate crumbs on the final coat. You don't want your client to have a really thick coat of crumbs. 
so this is what we're aiming for here now our aim with this coat is to get it to the thickness of the ganache plates so this is a six inch round cake and it's a six and a half uh, six and a quarter beg your pardon ganache plate and the reason for that is i kind of think that's quite a nice thickness of ganache when i do it for my base tier for example a 10 inch round cake I use a ten and a half inch ganache in plate and it just makes me feel a little bit more comfortable that it's thick enough to support all of the structure and to give a really nice good finish. Now this that's gone on the side of the plate you can actually use for your crumb coat because obviously it's a clean plate but you're still wiping your knife onto the plate to make sure there's no crumbs going in. You're going to get crumbs as you spread around this first crumb coat. That's why it's called a crumb coat. But you don't want to be the reason for the crumbs. <laughs> now, this obviously isn't covering the top of the cake using the ganache plates this way. There's lots of ways of doing it. So what I tend to do, my preferred way, which I tend to do when I've got quite a few cakes to ganache, I'll grab all the ganache plates out I'll put all the sides on and then leave them overnight and then the following morning the top ganache plate comes off and the top gets coated with a fresh layer of ganache. So I tend to turn my cake upside down and it can go into the fridge, it doesn't have to be left overnight again. So this is my slightly scruffy inner coat. So I'm just making sure there's no air bubbles. I make sure there's no gaps. Just smoothing all the way around. So let's add this last bit of ganache now onto here. Um, it hasn't actually been in the fridge yet, but the room is quite cold today. So what I'm going to do is just carry on and just show you how we finish it up. Now, what what to do if your cake is not 100% level? Well, I've actually got an ag bay, so uh, I tend to pop my ag bay onto my cakes before I put the top coat on. Uh, it's a super fast way of not even having to worry about whether they're 100% level or not. Makes your life quicker as well. So if you can make the job quicker, it means you're going to be a lot more, a lot less worried when you're doing the job as well. So I'm just going all the way around, just putting an extra coat onto this. If you get the tiniest piece of chocolate cake crumb coming through, you could always pick it off with a clean scribe. Um, but if it's going underneath the icing, you could get away with it. But obviously the neater the ganache coat, the final ganache coat, it does look so much nicer, doesn't it? And it also means if your client wants a ganache finished cake, the more you practice this way, the, the neater that your finished cake will be. Right, so we've got ganache on all the way around, as you can see. It's not perfect because I need to be able to show you how to fix it. So I've got my 25 centimeter long side scraper. I'm going to spread the weight on my hands. I'm going to see if we can do this left handed for you to make it easier to see. So spread the weight with your hands and you're aiming to touch only the top and the bottom of the actual scrapers. Yes, I'm very wonky with my left hand. So let's go back to the right. I obviously press too hard with my right. There we go. So I'm just taking the excess off. I go back on that first bit and put that little bit of extra icing back on, but it was nearly there. I'm also having to work a little bit quickly because the studio, as I mentioned, is not the warmest today. So if it's not a warm studio, you have to work quickly because if you can't expose the top and bottom of those ganache and plates, you won't get a smooth side. So that's the, the beauty of the ganache and plates. And if you've got a little gap, you just pop it back on. Right, so this then gets to sit. Now today it's not gonna to get to sit overnight. It's gonna go back into the fridge. But as I mentioned earlier, don't forget to bring it back to room temperature. Oh, and you can see me scraping off. There's very little ganache left in here now. 
So this is a six inch tall cake, six inch wide cake, and it was 300 uh, milliliters of cream and 900 grams of white chocolate. Okay, yes, yeah, very much done now, isn't it? So this ganache, what could you use this for when it's left over? Well, you could actually use it for if you've got a practice cake to do, or if you actually just want to do some cakes for family and friends, because the bit on the outside uh, might have a cake crumb or two. You could also put those outside pieces onto your plate and then inside the ganache is clean still. So the only ganache that is sort of tainted, if you like, is the ganache that you've actually taken back off the cake. However, that is fine for this cake, if that makes sense, because it's your client's cake, isn't it? Um, but I tend to not use it at all for that cake. I like to keep it nice and clean. So as you can see, I'm not worrying about if it's perfect at this stage, because this is going to go back into the fridge only for about 10 minutes or so, and then I will neaten up any areas. One thing I do need to mention, when you've just done the layer that I have, you're going to need to scrape all your ganache down because can you see it's getting firmer? Now this could go back into the microwave for 10 seconds. You could empty it out back over a bain marie for 10 seconds as well. But what you must do to stop it drying out too much is to get another piece of cling film or saran wrap. And then you're going to lay it over your ganache so that it touches all the surface of your ganache and up the side of the bowl. Now, I do this when I make my ganache as well, because that ganache doesn't get any air. And if the ganache is warm when you first made it, it doesn't get the condensation running up onto the cling film and dripping back down. There is no place for condensation to form when you form a seal like this. So this can now stay at room temperature. And when I'm ready to use it again, I'll just warm it in the microwave for 10 to 15 seconds. So I've just popped this back out of the fridge and I'm going to get some more ganache. Um, and I've got some, the cake is cold and the ganache is still the same room temperature that it was before. But what that means is, is the ganache that I place on now will set that much quicker. So you can also use a hot scraper to do this. But can you see the difference it's done to that side already? Uh, and the bit that I've taken off, you can pop back on because it's only come off the cake. Can you see that little piece of cake crumb? I tend to pick those out and just pop some fresh ganache in there just because it looks better. You don't run the risk of having uh, little patches coming through your wedding icing. Now, this is a birthday cake, so there's not quite the stress on the detail, but it's nice to have a good finish on your cake, isn't it? So let's just get those bits again. I'm just going to show you. I'm pulling off the excess. And can you see how much better that looks already? So you're going to go ahead and do that all the way around. Can you see this bit needs a little bit more attention? So that bit wasn't quite straight enough. And there's no pressure to start. And then I ease in the pressure. And then I ease off the pressure. There we are. That's much happier, isn't it? So this is going to get back in the fridge now for half an hour this time. Then we'll remove the top plate and I'll show you how to put the ganache on top. So now we need to do the top. So I've just taken this out of the fridge. I've also popped in my ganache for another 10 seconds. I need it movable and I need it slightly soft. But if it's too soft, it's just going to squish out the bottom. So... And we need it to be uh, four to five millimetres thick on the top because that will give our, our support to our, our cake. So that's ready to go. So you can see the ganache after it's been reheated. It's not quite lumpy, but it's not as beautifully swish as it was before. We do actually need to take this off. So this is going to stay as the top. So I'm just going to ever so gently run a knife in through now you can see that the chocolate has slid underneath that knife a little bit as well so you can see that edge there that's great that'll help keep it nice and neat but i need to go and wash my knife now there we go so the knife is ready should it be needed again so i there are two ways of doing this you could either put your ganache on top of here 
and I've got, you can see I placed my knife down there, I've got another clear acetate board and a, a Perspex board and a sheet of acetate. But what I found was, is if I put the chocolate here and turn those over, I had bubbles. So what I prefer to do instead, I prefer to put my chocolate into the center and it's a bit scary to do, but it does seem to work the best way. So you can see every now and again, there will be a sort of lump. I can't say it's a proper lump. That's better, it's going neater now. And it's a bit messy trying to spread onto acetate because acetate's so thin, isn't it? But don't worry, you can always push it back in and under. And your goal is to get this blob in the center as big as the circumference of your cake so you need it to be six inches same as our cake better to put too much because when you put the cake down it's going to squish down so you're looking for the four to five millimeter so aim for five to six millimeters and if you aimed for five to six millimeters it's going to to give you a better shape so you, again, still have two options. You can pick up your cake, which is by now beautifully supportable. And I'm just gonna take the piece of non-slip out from underneath and you could flip your cake over. But if the idea of that sends chills through you, you could still pick this up, lay it onto the top, smooth it down go do this quite quickly as you can see so you can see there's no bubbles there now then I'm going to get the other piece again don't worry about that chocolate on there for the moment and I'm going to slide it underneath so you basically want to put I'm trying to keep it in sight for you you want to keep your cake on a board so there's a board here and a board there and then you need to do the flip. So I'm hoping this isn't gonna be a candid camera moment, as they used to say. So we hold it firmly and a fast turn. Now you're gonna put it back onto your turntable, move this away, so that is now the bottom. And what you need to do is to make sure it's level. I may actually remove that, just in case it's not helping my turntable be level and then all of this excess gets put back into the bowl so what happens with this top this top will now have a perfectly smooth uh, bubble free and if it does have a bubble it's not the end of the world because the same way as you neaten out the sides I will show you how to neaten out the top now, this is going to go back into the fridge before that chocolate has time to belly out and then we'll scrape it again. So I've removed the cake from the fridge. Now, as you can see, can you see it's just released a little bit? Now, what that's doing is basically it's popped away from the chocolate because the chocolate is set. So if you have a look at that, you can remove the whole of the base. And I would advise doing that earlier. Now, you can completely move it away. You don't get much cake coming away. But if you get a lot of cake coming away, you could slide it with a knife to remove it. So I'm just going to put this in the wash. And then what you would need to do would be to put it on some form of surface. Now, I've got the original one of these, which we could put underneath. Now, I mentioned I use my ag bay to straighten them up as well. So this is why I don't worry too much. I'm going to give it a quick flip. So let's pop this turntable back underneath to make it easier to show you. And let's have a look at what work we need to do just to neaten it up a little bit. Now, you can see that that's peeled away and it leaves a residue. But if you have a look at the top, the top is quite smooth. It's not bad at all. And you can also see we've got quite a sharp edge on there. But can you see, we've got a slight lean. Now we've got a slight lean to this studio floor as well. So I need to use my spirit level to check it. So what I do is I will check the table from side to side, which is quite in the middle. I need to put something back on top of the cake in order to check the cake. 
which is almost near the middle. So I just need to take a little off that other side. So the other thing you can do is to turn it back upside down, use your ag bay and just remove a slither off the other end. Now I have one of the original ag bays or one of the very early ag bays at least. So this is really quite a long piece. Uh, it is actually, let me just check it. Oh, there we go. It's about 60 centimetres wide. So it's a lot bigger than some of the 12 inch ones that you see, which is 30 centimetres. Now, the way we use the ag bay, you let the ag bay do the work. Uh, it's an incredible piece of kit. You don't force anything. But can you see it's only taken a little bit off that side. It's taken nothing off the other. So what we're going to do, we're going to gently take off the very, very small amount and I'm gonna stroke up the sides to make sure they're straight. Then I have to wipe the blade. So can you see the chocolate on the blade? So let me just wipe the blade. And you wipe with the blade and you cut with the blade facing away from you. You never put your hands near that blade. It's like a bone saw. So it's, it's really the best cutting uh, tool in the business, really. But what I did, I just let the ag bay do its work and then I will turn the cake around and I will try it from the other side. So now we've cleaned that away. Let's turn it around. So we cut that side, so now we'll do it to the front. And it may not catch anything. Can you see it's caught a tiny bit again? Now you do have to press it down against the table. If you don't press against the table, it won't catch everything. It's, I know that sounds really strange, but it'll bounce up and the cake will push it away. Right, so I think that's quite happy now. Can you see it's not really catching anything? So that cake is good to go. So before I turn it over, I'm just going to fix this board on with some ganache. Now, this doesn't have to be perfectly neat ganache because this is just going underneath the cake. So whatever you do, don't make this a super thick layer. Uh, you just need to cover the cake surface. This also will seal in any of those loose crumbs from where you've trimmed the cake. And I'm not saying you have to trim the cake. I just thought I'd show you what to do if you need to trim the cake, because sometimes you do. So I need to put that tray back on. Now, obviously, I've just got some cake crumbs on there because I just moved them. Now. You're probably wondering, but they don't do cake cards that are six and a quarter inches, which is what this cake was. It was 6.25. Uh, so what I've done is I make sure I get a nice sealable cake card. And by sealable, I mean, you can see it's got a nice white edge to the bottom. It's a white clean edge as well. I got this from my local cake shop uh, and it's just beautiful, easy to keep tidy. And then I'm going to put a bit of non-slip underneath and I'm going to just pop this under there. No non-slip against the cake itself because I just want to keep an eye. One, two, three and up and over. I will have to clean away. Can you see little bits? That's just where the cake was trimmed. But as you can see, we've got a fairly straight edge to start off with, haven't we? And now we've got that straight cake as well. There we go taken away any obvious chocolate I think that's enough actually so it's not a perfect finish as you can see but it is uh, it is a nice neat enough finish for us to be able to to make this birthday cake so I would then spend if I was going to have this cake just natural as it is it would need another coat so there was 100% pure, no marks, no mess, no nothing. Uh, but as this cake is just getting covered in sugar paste and then it's having a design on it, it's perfectly ready to go. Mm -hmm. 